Wow, looks like someone's been dizzy. You've really outdone yourself with the source material this time. I figured we could use a change of pace. Yeah, definitely. So this time, we're diving into a whole bunch of videos about uh, daily life hobbies, social trends. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and you know what else? They're all geared toward English language learners. Perfect. Yeah, we can be language learners today too. So uh, one thing that really jumped out at me was this recurring theme of like the process of language learning. Yeah, what's interesting about that is how it captures that universal experience of learning a language. Yeah. You know, it's not just about the grammar, the vocabulary, it's that emotional journey, it's the challenges, it's the aha moments. And it's really just the joy of connecting with another culture. Absolutely. And you know, the creator really emphasizes this idea of making language learning F-U-N. You know, like finding those engaging books and videos on topics that you're already passionate about. Exactly. That's a really good point. I mean, it's like sneaking in a workout while you're binge watching your favorite show. You're learning without even realizing it. Right. Exactly. So smart. And, you know, speaking of sneaking things in, the creator also talks about how effective it can be to incorporate language practice into your daily routine. Like even those short bursts of study can really make a difference over time. Yeah, they actually recommend things like listening to a podcast during your commute or reviewing flashcards while you're waiting in line. It's all about finding those little pockets of time and making them work for you. Oh, that's so smart. That reminds me of that whole like micro learning trend that's been getting so much attention lately. Small, consistent effort, big results. Love it. Exactly. And the creator also emphasizes the importance of embracing mistakes at a part of the learning process. They even share some pretty funny anecdotes about their own language blunders, which reminds us it's okay to stumble. I love that. It's so refreshing to hear someone talk about language learning with honesty and humor. It takes the pressure off, right? Definitely. It shows that you can learn and grow from those mistakes. Totally. Now, speaking of taking the pressure off, let's transition a little bit and look at this day in the life of the video creator. They have a pretty structured routine during the week, don't they? They do, yes. The creator is a big advocate for a consistent daily schedule, and they really believe in waking up early. They usually get up between 6.00 and 6.14 a.m. And it's interesting, they make it a priority to do their language study first thing in the morning. So they dedicate time to their Indonesian studies before they even start their work as an English teacher. Wow, a 7.30 a.m. start time. That's impressive. I'm more of an 8 or 9 a.m. person myself. But I can imagine teaching English to students from all over the world, especially Brazil and Russia, must be so rewarding. Absolutely. It gives them a window into different cultures and learning styles. And the creator follows this routine pretty consistently throughout the week. They have an early dinner with their wife, usually a big meal. Then they maybe squeeze in some exercise to do some more language study and then lights out by 10 p.m. Early dinner, a consistent sleep schedule. This person is like the poster child for a balanced life. But it's interesting how their weekday routine contrasts with their weekends. Even though the wake up and bedtime stay the same, their weekends are more flexible. You know, it highlights the importance of rest and recovery, even when you've got a lot going on. And speaking of well-being, let's move on to exercise. Yeah. It's obviously a big part of the creator's life, and they seem to enjoy all kinds of activities. For sure. The videos mention everything from running, both outdoors and on the treadmill for those bad weather days, to weightlifting, playing sports, hiking, and even just taking a brisk walk. It seems like they really stress the importance of finding something you enjoy and sticking with it. Yeah, and what's really interesting is they emphasize the connection between exercise and mental clarity. You know, they say that physical activity helps them focus, it reduces their stress, and it boosts their mood overall. It's not just about the physical health benefits, but the mental well-being aspect, too. I am right there with them on that. Getting outside and moving really does wonders for me, too. I especially love hiking. Being out in nature is so grounding and rejuvenating. The creator seems to be on the same page. They describe hiking experiences in different types of landscapes. Mm -hmm. Mountains, forests, deserts, even rolling hills. And they even talk about the challenge of finding good hiking spots in big cities, acknowledging that sometimes access to nature isn't so easy. That's so true. I've totally felt that frustration of living in a city and craving more green space. But even if you can't get out to the mountains, there are still ways to be active. Take the stairs instead of the elevator, walk or bike to work. Even just dancing around your living room can make a difference. Absolutely. And speaking of living spaces, let's shift gears and talk about homes. The videos mainly focus on houses and apartments, you know, the most common options, especially here in the U.S. 
Yeah, I'm curious about those differences, though. Living in an apartment versus a house has got to be a completely different experience, right? Absolutely. The videos talk about how apartments are more common in big cities, where space is limited and affordability is key. They tend to be smaller than houses and more often rented than owned. It's just the reality of living in those densely populated urban areas. I totally get that. I've lived in my fair share of apartments. I like the convenience and the community aspect, but I don't know if I could handle living in a high-rise building on like the 30th floor. The creator actually mentions preferring lower level apartments too. They like the coziness. Yeah, very relatable. Now we think about houses. Those are usually found outside of city centers and they often have more space, including the backyard which might bring back some memories for some folks. Oh yeah, backyards, building forts, playing tag, water balloon fights. I miss those days. But back to houses. The creator mentions that they can be super expensive, especially in California where they live. Not just to buy, but even to rent. That's right. Housing costs in California are really high. Things like limited supply, high demand, and the desirable location all drive those costs up. It's something that affects a lot of people's lifestyles and financial planning there. Yeah, for sure. It's a good reminder that where you choose to live, whether it's a city or suburbs, comes with its own pros and cons. And just to round out our home tour here, the videos touch on condos and townhouses too. They kind of fall somewhere in between apartments and houses, right? Size-wise, ownership and community feel. Exactly. Condos give you that apartment-style living, but you might have the option to own. And townhouses give you a bit more space with a community vibe similar to houses, but maybe at a lower cost. All right, so we talked homes. Now I'm ready for a different topic. How about pets? The videos point out that dogs are super popular here in the U.S., and it looks like our creator is a big fan too. Yes, from their childhood, they had both big and small dogs, but they seem to really love the intelligence and playfulness of the larger breeds. They mention how much care and attention dogs need here. It's like they're practically family members. Yeah, that's a good observation. That bond between people and their dogs is a big part of American culture. It's not just food and shelter, but playtime training, socialization, and even healthcare. Now, cats, that's a different story. The creator mentioned being allergic and not really loving how independent cats are. But get this, they actually ate guinea pig in Peru once. Apparently there, it's food, not a pet. Oh, wow. It just shows how cultural perspectives on animals can be so different. Something that's a pet in one part of the world could be someone's dinner in another. Talk about a culture shock. It's a good reminder to be respectful of those differences though, right? To keep an open mind. For sure. And beyond cats and dogs, the videos mention some other pets that are common here like hamsters, birds, rabbits, fish, and even reptiles. It's amazing there's truly a pet out there for everyone. Speaking of different personalities, let's jump into the digital world, social media. It's everywhere these days. Yeah, it's true. The creator gives an overview of some of the most popular platforms, starting with the big one, Facebook. It sounds like Facebook is where everyone connects with family and friends, shares updates, posts pictures, videos, and even gets their news. Though, I have to admit, I'm more of an Instagram person myself. Instagram is definitely more visual, mm -hmm. and it's huge with younger people. Scrolling through all those pictures and stories is pretty engaging, almost relaxing in a way. Totally, I love that. But for those who want to stay on top of current events and jump into conversations about breaking news, I can see why Twitter is so appealing. For sure. And then you have Snapchat with those messages that disappear after you view them. It's like this whole new way to communicate and share what's happening in your day. It's crazy how social media has become such a big part of our lives. It affects how we connect, how we get information, even how we see the world. Yeah, it has a lot of power to shape our experiences, both individually and as a society. And it keeps evolving in ways we are just starting to understand. So, OK, last stop on our deep dive journey today, New Year's resolutions. Who doesn't love the idea of hitting that reset button and setting goals for the year ahead? It's like a universal ritual. The creator lists some classic resolutions like losing weight, studying English, reading more, learning a new skill, or quitting smoking. They all point to this desire to grow and change. It's funny how some of those resolutions come back year after year. It's either proof of how popular they are or a reminder that some goals, like healthy habits, are a lifelong effort. Or maybe it just shows how much we need to reflect on ourselves and how we always want to be better versions of ourselves. That's a good point. This deep dive has been quite the adventure. We covered the details of language learning, daily routines, the benefits of exercise, homes and pets, the world of social media, and even New Year's resolutions. It's like we took a whirlwind tour of being human. 
Yeah, it really shows how everything is connected, right? Like language, culture, technology, and all of our personal goals. They all come together to create this whole experience of being human. Totally. And it's so cool how these different topics like language learning, exercise, even pets and social media, they all point back to these bigger ideas of personal growth and how we connect with other cultures. Exactly. It's like every single choice, every little habit, every quirky interest, all of that adds up to this journey of who we are and how we see the world. You know, going back to everything we've talked about so far, one thing that stuck with me was how the creator sees language learning. It's not just about being fluent, it's about enjoying the process, the ups and downs, the things you learn along the way, all of it. Yeah, they even talked about how those mistakes can actually be the best way to learn. They force you to think differently, to change your approach. Right, and I remember that story they told about accidentally telling a shopkeeper they wanted to buy the whole store, not just one item. They laughed about it, but you could tell that's how they really learned that grammar rule. Exactly, and that's what's so great about it, learning through real life, even if it's a little embarrassing sometimes, it sticks with you way better than just memorizing things. For sure. It's about immersing yourself in the language, the culture, and not being afraid to mess up to learn from those mistakes and to keep going. Speaking of keeping going, I was really interested in how disciplined the creator is with their daily routine. Waking up early, making language study a priority, keeping a consistent sleep schedule. It's clear they found a system that works for them, something that makes them productive and helps them feel good. Honestly, I'm a little jealous of their morning motivation. Makes me wonder if trying some of those things might help me feel more focused and have more energy during the day. Well. Maybe that's something you can experiment with. It's funny how just seeing someone else's routine can make you think about your own habits and what you could change. Absolutely. And while we're talking about thinking about ourselves, what about you? Were there any specific insights or stories from these videos that stood out to you? Oh, there were so many. But one that I kept thinking about was when the creator talked about their love of hiking and being out in nature. They talked about finding peace and feeling refreshed when they're surrounded by nature. And they even mentioned how those experiences actually help them with their language learning by giving them real life examples for new words and phrases. That's such a cool connection. It reminds me of that idea of embodied learning. Like we learn best when we're using our whole selves, our minds, bodies, and senses all at the same time. Hiking in a new place, seeing new plants and animals, trying to describe those things in another language, it all comes together in this really immersive way. Exactly. And I think it connects to this bigger theme of cultural exchange that we see throughout these videos, whether it's learning a language, traveling, or even just seeing different perspectives online. The creator seems to be all about getting out of their comfort zone and engaging with the world, all the good and the bad. Oh, absolutely. And talk about getting out of your comfort zone. Remember that guinea pig story? It definitely showed how different cultures can have really different ideas about things and how important it is to be respectful and open-minded. I don't know if I could be as adventurous as the creator, but I do admire their willingness to try new things, even if it means challenging their own beliefs. It shows their sense of adventure. Yeah. And it highlights how powerful travel can be putting yourself in a culture that's totally different from your own and letting those experiences broaden your understanding of the world and ultimately yourself. Especially of broadening our understanding, I was also really fascinated by what the creator said about social media. Each platform has its own unique way of connecting with people, sharing things, and getting information. And it's interesting how the platforms we choose say something about who we are and how we interact with the world. It really makes you think about how these platforms affect our attention spans, our relationships, even how we see ourselves. The creator talked about how they can bring people together, but also make people feel isolated and how they often show the best parts of life, but not the real messy parts. It's definitely a complicated and constantly changing world. And it makes me wonder what the long-term effects of all this technology will be on us, both as individuals and as a society. But maybe that's a discussion for another deep dive. For sure. So as we head into the final part of our conversation, let's turn our attention back to personal growth. You know, as we've been talking about all these things, the language learning, the routines, social trends, even pets, I've noticed a theme that keeps coming up. Oh, and what's that? It's this idea of being intentional. The creator seems to approach everything in their life with a sense of purpose, whether it's setting aside time for language study, making exercise a regular thing, or choosing to use certain social media platforms over others. That's a really interesting point. 
It suggests that personal growth isn't just about having goals, it's about making decisions every day that match up with what we value and what we want to achieve. It's about being aware of how we use our time, energy, and attention to try to build a life that feels both satisfying and meaningful. Exactly. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I have a question that's been on my mind. So how do we take all these different things, the language learning routines, social trends, even pets and social media, and see how they fit into this bigger idea of personal growth and connecting with other cultures? It's like we have all these puzzle pieces, but what picture do they make when we put them together? That's a great question. It's like you're saying that all the choices we make, our habits, the things we're interested in, they're not just random things. They're all part of a bigger story of who we are, how we learn about other cultures, and how we grow as people. Exactly. Like learning a new language, it's not just about the grammar. It's about opening yourself up to new ways of thinking, connecting with people from different backgrounds, and seeing the world in a new way. Right. And like we saw with the video creator, having a regular routine can really help you grow. It gives you a structure for prioritizing the things that are good for your mind and body, whether it's exercise, language study, or spending time with people you care about. And even the choices that seem small, like where we live or what social media we use, can actually tell us a lot about the cultures we're part of, what we like, and even our financial situations. Those things shape our experiences in ways we might not even realize. It makes you think about how much control we really have over our own lives, right? We make choices, but there are all these factors, things we can and can't control, that also influence us. So with all this talk about language, culture, technology, and personal growth, what's the main takeaway? What's the big idea we can hold on to? I think the biggest takeaway is realizing how connected everything really is. The choices we make, even the ones that seem small, they all add up to this bigger story. A story about what it means to be human, how we share our experiences, connect with different cultures, and always try to learn, grow, and improve ourselves. It's like we're all on this journey together, constantly learning, changing, and shaping the world around us. And maybe, just maybe, the things we've learned from these videos will inspire us to try something new, meet someone different, or just look at our everyday lives with a fresh perspective. I hope so. As you continue your own journey with language, culture, and personal growth, remember to embrace those unexpected twists and turns, question what you think you know, and stay open to the possibility of finding something truly amazing. That's a great way to put it. So we'll leave you with one last thought. Think about the things you do every day, your habits, the things you love. How do those things reflect your own unique journey of personal growth and your connection to other cultures? We'd love to hear your thoughts and questions. Until next time, keep exploring and keep learning.